Hello everyone, my name is Xiao Yitao. I am a PhD student at Duke University. I am going to talk to you about our work, Data Poisoning Attacks to Local Differential Privacy Protocols. This is a joint work with Jin Yuanjia and my advisor, Neil Gong. In the traditional way of data statistics collection, when the query is sent to the cloud server, the cloud server directly collects users' data, computes the query's statistics, and answers to the query. In such scenarios, the data collector or the central server needs to be trusted. However, nowadays, users want to keep their sensitive data private, and the server may not be trusted. Therefore, researchers propose local differential privacy protocols that protect users' privacy. The main idea is that the users perturb their data by adding some noise to them before sending them to the server. With the noisy data, the desired data statistics can still be accurately calculated by the server, while each individual user's data cannot be recovered precisely. However, in this work, we show that LDP protocols are vulnerable to data poisoning attacks. Specifically, an attacker can inject fake users into the protocol. While the genuine users follow the protocol, the fake users can arbitrarily tamper with the data they send to the server. The server will calculate data statistics that are desired by the attacker with the poisoned data. In this work, we consider data poisoning attacks towards two most common applications of LDP, that is, frequency estimation and capacitor identification. In frequency estimation, we assume each user holds one item. The desired data statistics is the frequency of each item. Generally speaking, the frequency estimation protocols perform three key steps to estimate the frequency. First, the users encode the item to evaluate the encoded space. Second, the users randomly perturb the encoded value to another one. Third, the server aggregates the perturbed encoded values to estimate the item frequency. Formally, we say a protocol satisfies epsilon LDP if this condition is met. This guarantees one cannot recover an individual item precisely from its perturbed encoding back. In this work, we focus on pure LDP protocols proposed in previous works. Specifically, an LDP protocol is pure if there exist two probabilities P and Q that satisfy the following equations. In the equation, Sy is the set of items that Y supports. We say Y supports V if, in the aggregate step, the perturbed encoded value Y votes for V when estimating the frequency of V. The support set depends on the protocol we use. In the aggregate step, the pure LDP protocols estimate the frequency of an item following this equation. Here, the indicator function is 1 if YI supports V, otherwise it is 0. Next, I will introduce three popular pure LDP protocols, namely KRR, OUE, and OLH. KRR is a protocol that encodes an item to itself. In the perturb step, KRR keeps the encoded item unchanged with probability P and perturbs it to a different random item with a probability Q. In KRR, a perturb value Y only supports itself in the aggregate step. OUE encodes an item to a one-hot binary vector with the D, in which only one bit is 1, while all other bits are 0. In the perturb step, OUE considers each bit of the encoded binary vector separately. Specifically, for each bit of the encoded vector, if it is 1, then it remains 1 with probability P. Otherwise, if the bit is 0, then it is split to 1 with probability Q. Then, in the aggregate step, the perturb vector supports all items whose corresponding bits in the vector equals to 1. OLH uses hash functions. Specifically, it encodes an item to a hash function and hash value pair. The hash function is randomly selected from a family of hash functions, and it maps the item to a hash value in the domain smaller than the item domain. In the perturb step, OLH perturbs only the hash value in the encoded pair. Specifically, the hash value stays unchanged with probability P prime and switches to a different hash value with probability Q prime. In the aggregate step, a perturbed pair Y that equals to H A supports any item V that is hashed to A by H. Next, we discuss another application of LDP, that is, habitator identification. 
The data statistics we aim to find here is the most frequent key items. We consider a state-of-the-art protocol called prefix extending method. In PEM, users are divided into groups, and PEM iteratively find portions of frequent values using OLH in each group. Next, I will introduce the threat model we consider in this work. We assume the attacker has a set of target items to promote. For example, a company may be interested in making its products more popular. More specifically, in frequency estimation, the attacker aims to increase the estimate frequency of the target items. While in have hater identification, the attacker aims to promote the target items to be identified as have haters. For attacker's background knowledge, we assume the attacker knows the LDP protocol. And for the attacker's capability, we assume the attacker can inject fake accounts into the protocol. Previous measurement study showed that the attacker can get access to fake accounts with low costs. We use different metrics for our attacks in different applications. For frequency estimation, we define frequency gain as the difference between the estimated frequency before and after attack. We use overall gain as our metric, which is defined as the sum of the expectations on the frequency gains. An attacker essentially manipulates the encode and perturb steps to craft perturb values y that maximizes the overall gain g. For heavy hitter identification, we use success rate as the metric which is defined as the fraction of target items that are identified as heavy hitters. Now I will introduce our attacks towards frequency estimation. We propose two baseline attacks, RPA and RIA, and also an optimization-based attack, MGA. I will focus on the optimized MGA, in which the fake users find the optimal perturb values Y by solving the optimization problem that maximizes the overall gain. Specifically, let's first assume there are n genuine users and m fake users in the protocol. Then we can write the overall gain in a closed form as the equation here. In the equation, the second term is independent of the attacker crafted y, and hence we denote it by c to imply that this is a constant when the parameters are fixed. Then maximizing g is equivalent to maximizing this term. Formally, we can rewrite the optimal attack as follows. For each fake user, we craft its perturbed value by solving this problem. Intuitively, MGA maximizes the number of target items that Y supports. In the following slides, I will describe the MGA towards different protocols. In KLR, for each fake user, MGA selects any target item as its perturbed value and reports it to the server. We can calculate the maximal gain for KRR as this. In OUE, for each fake user, MGA sets the corresponding bits of the target items to 1 in the perturbed vector. Moreover, it also randomly chooses some other bits and sets them to 1, such that the number of 1s seems normal in this vector. The overall gain of MGA OUE can be expressed as this. In OLH, for each fake user, MGA searches for the hash function that hashes all target items to a same hash value and report the hash function and hash value pairs to the server. The overall gain is shown here. We summarize the overall gains of attacks towards different protocols in this table. Here, we replace the values P, Q, and C in previous equations with the parameters of the protocols. Here are some takeaways from the table. Comparing the different attacks, we can find that MGA achieves larger overall gains than the baseline attacks. And the overall gain of MGA is much larger than the standard deviation of the estimation for the protocols. Comparing the different protocols, we can see that MGA achieves the same overall gain for OUE and OLH. This means that they have the same level of security. We also notice that when the item domain D is large, the overall gain of MGA is larger for KRR than that for OUE and OLH. This implies that OUE and OLH are more secure when there are many items. Focusing on the overall gain of MGA, we observe that there is a security privacy trade-off for the pure LDP protocols. Specifically, a smaller privacy budget, Epsilon, leads to a stronger privacy, while also results in a weaker security. Next, I will introduce how we attack the heavy hitter identification protocols. 
We observe that the heavy heater identification protocols uses frequency estimation oracles. Therefore, we can apply our previous attacks to heavy heater identification. Specifically, for TEM that we consider in this paper, we perform MGA OL edge in each group. Here are some evaluation results on the heavy heater attacks. We can see that with only 5% fake users injected, MGA can promote 9 of the target items to be top 10 heavy hitters, and all 10 target items to be top 15 heavy hitters. We also explore some countermeasures in this work, namely normalization, detecting fake users, and conditional probability-based detection. I will briefly talk about detecting fake users, and other countermeasures can be found in our paper. The key idea of detecting fake users is that a set of items will always be supported simultaneously by the fake users. For instance, in this illustration of OUE, the second, fourth, and fifth bits are once simultaneously for three users. Hence, we can detect fake users by a frequent item set many, where we find the item sets that are supported together by abnormally many users and mark these users as fake ones. Their reports will be excluded from the aggregate step. Here we show the results of detecting and removing fake users. We can see that when the fraction of fake users data and the number of target items are is large, item set mining can effectively detect the fake users, and the overall gain drops to nearly zero. An attacker can adapt the MGA attack to evade the detection. Specifically, instead of having every fake user supporting all our target items, the attacker can randomly select our prime target items to support for each fake user. The figure shows that adaptive MGA achieves smaller overall gains as R prime becomes smaller. However, it can evade detection when we choose R prime smaller than R. Here are some conclusions. In this work, we propose data poisoning attacks to LDP that can effectively promote target items chosen by the attacker. We further show the security privacy trade-off in the LDP protocols. We also consider some countermeasures and show that they have limited effectiveness, highlighting the needs for advanced defenses against our attacks. Thank you for your attention.